Good morning. At least it is morning when I am filming. I feel like it's been a while since I've done a video, like filmed a video, because I had pre-recorded one for when I was in Seattle, so it's been a couple weeks since I have filmed, but I'm very excited to be sitting down and doing this video. Today we're going to be talking about skincare. Lots of skincare. I actually had all of this in one bag were the empty products that I had. They were like overflowing out of this. And to make it a little bit more manageable, I picked out all of the skincare and thought we would just do a skincare specific empty products video. Also because I have some a little bit of new skincare in my life and I thought it would be a good opportunity for me to show you what's come into my routine as I'm trying to keep a very sort of like, you know, trending towards skincare minimalism, all of that. There is a ton of stuff in here. Let me see if I can get you. So we have a lot to get through. Um, I'm very proud of myself for using all of this stuff up. I'd like to do sort of an updated AM PM skincare routine. It's been a minute since I've done one. Talking about skincare is like probably my favorite thing to do on YouTube still. All the diverse content that I do talking about skincare is just really fun. Before we get into the video, if you would like to support La Morie La Musique in my future directions, I am on Patreon. Thank you so much to all of you that support La Morie La Musique on Patreon. I'm going to be filming my patron exclusive video for October. I do an, one exclusive video every month over there. They voted on seeing what's in my holistic medicine cabinet. So I have like everything laid out and I'm I'm all ready to film that. I'm excited. It includes like some Chinese medicine stuff I have kicking around and you know just sort of other like ancillary beauty things that don't get talked about in the scope of makeup and skincare. So I'll have a link down below if you want to go check that out and considering supporting my channel. Thank you so much. Now let's talk about skincare. All right I kind of want to start with cleansers first. Maybe before, like after I talk about the empty product, I'm just gonna show you what replaces it. I feel like it's like a little bit better that way. So two cleansers, Stark's Aurora Balm Cleanser and the Max and Me Purity and Grace. Why do I feel like I've talked about this before? I probably have. Stark's Aurora, I like just finished. Well, the sun is coming out. I finished this like within the last week. I am sad that it's now gone. I talked about this product ad nauseum. I have a whole Stark review, but it's, one of my favorite balm cleansers. It's sort of a grapefruit cocoa scent and I love it as a makeup removal first cleanse step. I'm sure at some point I'll purchase one to have back in my routine. And then Max and Me Purity and Grace is an oil cleanser that I surprisingly really enjoyed. It To me it reminds me of like celery that's like the only thing I can think of when I smell it. I really enjoyed using it. It was one of those ones that really grew on me over time after using it. So for an oil cleanser to feel like it is actually sort of like drawing things out of the skin, I, I think this one definitely did. I again would use it as a first step oil cleanse. It is quite expensive, so that would be my only hesitation in recommending it. But if you have money to burn, it is a nice sort of treat. So different, a little bit more nourishing, a little bit more clarifying and balm and oil formulation. Now to replace those, I do have several new cleansers in my life. I picked up the Jordan Samuel Balm Cleanser, After Show Balm Cleanser when I was, <laughs> you know, living my best life and having a Jordan Samuel facial last week. in Seattle like so epic I I want to go on like a total diversion talking about how amazing that experience was but I'm gonna try and stay on track because there's so much to get through here I don't know I'll probably talk about it in October favorites when I was there I picked up this and a backup of plie which I've already been using and actually it's not called plie anymore it's called something else <laughs> I can't remember I haven't even used this yet because I am testing a couple of, uh, I think I can talk about this, balm cleansers from Activist, uh, a brand I really like, and actually I have an empty product in here from her. The person behind Activist is a woman named Allison, who's like a family friend of mine. I'm really happy to use and talk about her products because she's just a really nice, amazing person that makes some really lovely products. And they have affordable shipping to Canada, which I know is a, a boon to many of you Canadians. So she sent me four different prototypes of balms. So I've been trying them out 
and that's sort of what has taken precedent to getting to dive into this head first. I have two other cleansers. I'm big on cleansers. This is an Italian skincare product. It's called Wonder for Skin Truly Organic Cosmetics That Save Your Skin. I think the brand is Alma Briosa. This was a gift from my Italian subscriber, Mickey, who I have talked about before. This is like one of her favorite uh, skincare products. It's sort of a multi-purpose product that can be used as like a balm cleanser or as an occlusive moisturizer, similar to um, Aurora, how Aurora can be used. So I've been experimenting with this and it's actually sort of, it has a light citrus scent so I consider it almost like a one in one out for Aurora. So I'm going to see how I get on with this. You know I love a good international beauty product. <laughs> okay one more cleanser and it would be a direct replacement for this as an oil cleanser. Now this is the Christina Holy or Holly don't know how to pronounce and Marie Veronique collaboration pure and essential oil free oil cleanser. Now I've only used this once and it's really beautiful. Now, I will make a slight diversion to talk about this because someone had actually asked me about this collaboration and I was all set to anti-haul it. And when I was going to anti-haul it, there were only three products in the line. And it has since expanded to include um, the cleanser and the toner, which I also got. I picked this up because it's relatively affordable. And interestingly, I'm sure if you are sort of a skincare enthusiast and sort of around social media, you will notice, at least I have noticed, a trend coming up in skincare, which is a move away from essential oils, first of all, and there's a really good New Yorker article on the backstory behind Young Living and doTERRA and kind of essential oils, the evangelizing of essential oils in general. And so I feel like there's been sort of this interesting recent debate on essential oils in skincare and I think it's a little bit like don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, right? But I think essential oils are amazing and definitely have a place in skincare for most people, right? It's again very individual, but I personally have also for a while been feeling like I don't want to layer a bajillion products on my skin that all have essential oils in them. My philosophy has always been like pick one sort of active product, usually a serum, and build my skincare around that. So I do like the idea of having an essential oil-free cleanser. The other quick thing I want to mention that I'm noticing as a trend in skincare is people are starting to throw around the, the words microbiome. This does. This whole line talks about being really good for overly sensitized skin and sort of restoring the skin's microbiome, probiotic skincare, all of that kind of stuff. Now. It's not new, I don't know if you guys know that brand, Aurelia. That's like one of the first lines of sort of probiotic skincare that I knew about. And then there's also that old school like bar of soap, I think it's called Dr. Ohira or something. But I'm noticing it coming up more. Moving away from essential oils and overly sensitized skin and towards replenishing the skin's microbiome, I am noticing as recent skincare trends. And I bring that up to make us all aware that that's what's happening as a marketing trend. Now, I'm, I don't, I think it probably has some merit, like everything does, but it's just so interesting to see these like pendulums swing. And so I'm very aware that that's what's being marketed to me. And I'm willing to kind of like dip my toe in, but it's like then people are gonna wanna sort of be like, oh, like no essential oils anymore, which I think is just really a mistake and quite problematic, honestly. However, I am like, I used it once and I really like it, but I'll talk more about it somewhere else. <laughs> Wouldn't be a video without the hair zhuzh. Okay, why don't we do toners now since I already showed you the Marie Veronique one. I think I have three in here. I go through mists pretty uh, quickly, I would say. This one lived at work. It's the Lil Fox Mystic Awakening Rosemary Toning Mist. I really enjoyed this. I had never smelled a rosemary face mist and as like a workday mist it's really nice because I feel like rosemary is very good for kind of like perking you up. It's sort of re-stabilizing your concentration if that makes sense. So I thought this was great. Lil Fox products have been quite hit or miss for me. I either am like gaga obsessed with them or they don't work for me at all. Actually, 
I wasn't like totally obsessed with this, but I did really like it. I'm not sure I would buy it, but I enjoyed using it. It was a perk in a Beauty Heroes box. Okay, this product I am Gaga obsessed with. It's the Omli Silver Rich Face Mist. And I think that they've come out with a second formulation, like a second version of this. Oh my gosh, I need to buy another one of these. As soon as I finish up um, one thing that I'm using, I think I'm gonna buy another one. Uh, just the most beautiful smelling, highly botanical, floral, but not cloying mist. Before, I feel like my favorite in that category was the Tata Harper Hydrating Floral Essence, and this like blows that out of the water. I also found it to be just great in terms of skincare benefits. It was moisturizing, very nice for skin prep, took down redness, all that sort of thing that you want from a mist with a really just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful experience. Really nice for spring and summer, for sure. Just kind of puts you in that, that elemental mindset. Starting to think more in sync with the seasons as part of my astrology studies. <laughs> Varid Organic Botanicals Herb Infused Toner. I also loved this. It was unique in the sense that the dispensing mechanism is different than anything I've used. It doesn't come in a misting hydrosol. It comes in a pump. So with the idea that you would either pump it onto a cotton round or directly into your hand, which I prefer to do. I do not like putting product on cotton rounds because I feel like the cotton rounds soak up too much of the product and the stuff is so expensive that it's like I want it like all on my skin and I didn't have an issue pumping on my hand and splashing on my face it, it worked completely fine the benefit that I have heard to pumping on a cotton round and swiping on your face is it gives a light exfoliation I'm sad that this is gone I really enjoyed it it's like a bright pink color because of the hibiscus that's in it and for me it was my morning toning step now I don't wash my face in the morning so I feel like it served this really nice purpose of um, after splashing my face with cool water to kind of just, you know, wake myself up. Putting this on felt like a really nice step in lieu of a morning cleanse. Now that this is gone, it prompted me to buy another product that would fill that step in my morning skincare routine. I went for the Balancing Hypotonic from the same collaborative range. Now. I have been using this every morning for the last like week and a half and what I don't like about it is that you basically have to put it on a cotton round. It comes like this and I have tried to sort of dump it on my hand and you end up like sp spilling product which is not ideal. So I have been putting this on a cotton round and swiping it. Um, I do feel like I'm getting the benefits but I would prefer to just have it in my hand and, and put it on so I don't love the packaging but the product I I'm liking so far I will say it smells extremely funky uh, it smells like fermented sauerkraut juice or something and I think that's because it does have some oh it has apple cider vinegar in it that's probably what I'm smelling yeah some other like ferments and things like that in it so in this so same sort of line of skin microbiome probiotic skincare and it it leaves like a sort of interesting not really film on the skin but it has something in it that makes it um similar to how like a glycerin or some sort of uh humectant would sort of stay on the skin rather than just a water-based product that I feel those tend to dry your skin out more over time. That's just a first impression, but I am quite enjoying this so far. Okay, I have two empty sort of hyaluronic serum products. Actually, I have three. I have an empty Provise Level 1 to 6 Nutrify Tonic. I have an empty Activist Hyaluronic Serum. And I have an empty Jordan Samuel Hydrate. You can tell I love a water-based hyaluronic serum product. It's because I am a fan of using face oils and before putting a face oil on either in the morning or in the evening, I like to have a, sort of a barrier serum like this down just to kind of uh, keep moisture attracted to the skin. My favorite of these is the Provise, which I have a new bottle of. You can see that they changed it to an amber bottle. I love this 
product. I find that my skin likes it the most in terms of how sort of moist and plump and comfortable it leaves my skin. It lasts, this product lasts a long time in terms of it takes a while to get through the bottle. Um, it's the most amount of product too, it's 60 mils, whereas the others are smaller amounts. Um, 30 mil, yeah, I think these are each 30 mil. So it lasts forever and the price point is great. I think it's in the $40 range and for how long it lasts, like, I took me like a year plus to get through this and it stayed good the entire time. So for me, it just ticks off every box. Now, I do also really like the Activist one in that it's a little bit more like high powered. So if you are to the dry side of normal, I do think that this is sort of worth the investment. It's a bespoke, <laughs> I'm still a self-respecting person that uses bespoke in a sentence, but it is a customized formulation that is tailored to your own specific skin needs and it arrives like completely mixed and ready for your use. And I just found it to be like a kicked up version of one of these. It's just really moisturizing, really nice for like an evening hyaluronic serum step like in the dead of winter if you have really dry skin. Um, it's like double the, well more, because it's half the product and it's already double the price of the Provise. Yeah, it's quite expensive. I think this is like $80 for 30 mils. But if you, you know, if your skin is really sort of in need of some rehab and some intense nourishment and you wanna support a small woman owned business by a really amazing person, I think this is a great one to consider. I think I have a coup um, an indefinite coupon code that's down below. And she often runs um, promotions, which I try and alert you guys to. It's at this point in filming that my legs start falling asleep as I am sitting here cross-legged. Yeah, so I like that. And then Jordan Samuel Hydrate, I think, is a really nice product as well. It is, again, quite affordable. Love the company. Love Jordan. Should go without saying. I went through the bottle very quickly. I have found that to be the case with other people I've talked to. And I found the, the effect to be fine. It didn't like blow me out of the water per se. For me, I love his cleansers the most. I do also have a towel in here, which I'll talk about in a minute, but I'm not sure I would buy this again imminently. However, when he used this on me during the facial, I was like, oh my God, like, what is that? It feels so good on my skin. He's like, it's hydrate. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe it was just like the magic of being part of like the whole line of Jordan Samuel products. It was really nice. Okay, I have a couple of face oils that I can tell you about. Jordan Samuel Etoile. Now this is just the regular Etoile, not Etoile with retinol. I am not a retinol user. That could be like a whole video unto itself, but the bullet point is that I don't really feel like my skin needs it. I know a lot of people use it preventatively for aging purposes, and I am more of the philosophy that I would like to work on like strengthening my skin barrier over time rather than increasing like really rapid cell turnover philosophy. So there's sort of different camps with the retinol. I do know that his uh, version of retinol is a very, very low percentage though. So yeah, I mean, that's just sort of like a personal preference, me not using retinol right now. Um, this was a really like honestly nice product. I didn't have any experience with cranberry seed oil, which is the main oil base oil in here. And I thought it was very, very nice. If you are someone that doesn't want to use a product with essential oils, this is a great option. It's essential oil free, great for sensitive skin, very moisturizing, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I did end up using uh, some of it up as body care just to get through it because I am often overwhelmed with all the skincare that I am testing. So I liked that. This is the Varid Anti-Aging Treatment Face Oil. And this is, this bottle is empty, but I decanted it into uh, another container that I'm still using because the pump broke. Kind of a bummer, I wish it had been able to stay in this. You know, it is what it is. Uh, I love this face oil. I will say I wish it came in not a clear jar. I just feel better about active face oils like this with essential oils that are in amber or dark glass, so I actually did decant it into an amber jar. I really like this face oil. I totally trust Virid's formulations. She has like close to 30 years of experience in herbal formulation and skincare. More and more, I'm just, um, and I think probably all of you too, it's like I really am paying attention to a formulator's background and experience and, you know, not that 
one angle is better than the other, like herbalism background versus aesthetician background versus scientific background, like biology background. Like it, that doesn't matter to me so much as like, does this person know their craft? Because I think that there are so many different angles that you can formulate effective skincare from. I think that Varid is at the top of the game as far as herbalism background and aesthetician background formulation. She kind of has both of those. And this face oil is stunning. It has like green coffee beans in it, so you kind of get a note of that. It's sort of lemony, really complex and layered. I think it's a nice investment because it's totally aromatherapy and skincare in one. In fact, she often encourages people that use her products to really like inhale them because when you inhale the oil, it does, the particles do sort of, you ingest them through your sinuses. Calms the limbic system, has sort of a mind-body effect and in that respect, I think that this is really gorgeous and I'm still enjoying using it. My skin seems to really like it as well. I am sort of deciding to toss my Uma face oil trial kit. I got through most of the beauty boosting face oil, most of the ultimate brightening and like maybe half of the total reju rejuvenation. I find that they're, they have sort of gone off at this point. I've had this for maybe 10 months, eight or 10 months. And when I've been trying reaching for these recently, I just haven't felt that they are performing at sort of like their peak. And I have so much other stuff to use that I'm just not going to use them anymore. <laughs> Um, just because they're not performing the way that I feel like they do when they're most potent and fresh. Now, compared to the sort of trend towards essential oil, minimalism, microbiome sort of stuff, Uma sits way on the far end of being essential oil heavy. They are the star of the show in these products. I have seen really great results from using them. I would say my favorite product from the Uma line is the hair oil, which was featured in one of the Beauty Heroes boxes. I think that these are often too potent and powerfully scented for a lot of people. Um, but if you are curious about them, the trial kit I think is a really nice way to see which one you like and they honestly the little ones last forever. So. I have a empty jojoba oil that I'll just show you. This is what I used to take off my eye makeup in the evening. Just organic jojoba oil. I go through one of these probably every three or four months. Just a no frills product. I like removing my eye makeup separately with an oil. I have a pack of Bloom face wipes in here. These are the daily cleansing and makeup removing towelettes for dry and sensitive skin. These I mostly use, um, sometimes I'll use them after the gym, not often, or uh, to remove like lipstick swatches when I'm filming and stuff like that. So they're just nice to have around. They're really the only ones I buy. Honest Hazel Eye Gels. I think I saved yeah, an empty one to just show you what they look like. If you've never used these, they're a really nice kind of like weekend little luxury. I have noticed, I will say, I mean, I use these all the time. I keep them in the fridge or I have been and out of the fridge, they seem to have a more difficult time sticking on the under eye region. Like I have to be lying down or sort of like at a 45 degree angle to have them sort of stay in place right out of the fridge. So I think putting them in the fridge slightly changes the consistency of the ingredients that are on them. But, you know, I love an eye gel. Does anyone know of cl more cleanly formulated eco versions of eye gels? Because I'd be curious to try other brands. The Honest Hazel ones I get on Beauty Habit, I think you can get a three pack for 10 or $12. This is the Josh Rosebrook Nutrient Day Cream Broad Spectrum SPF 30. Now, how satisfying is it to see the empty? Oh, yes. I have the Beauty Heroes full size one that came, I think, in July. Beauty Heroes. Uh, ready to start using. I've been trying to use up my Suntegrity sunscreen. This is a, an amazing eco sunscreen. I really like it. I have a whole video reviewing it and demoing it. I will say the packaging design has changed. There was a ton of product left in here when I when the pump stopped working. I have never had more issues getting residual product out of a jar than I did with this. It took me like half an hour and like a broken makeup spatula in the process to get it out. It just took a really long time. And you can see there is still like some 
product that you just can't get into in there. Like the, what is this called? The mouth of the jar is just really small. I think that that has changed. Um, the bottle has changed. It's more like short and plump looking. It's just a different design. Okay, and then two masks. Max and Me Sweet Serenity Mask and Wash is an empty, and I have an empty Mahalo bean mask. Where did I talk about this recently? Somewhere. I really liked it. I think it's a really beautiful skin product that my skin enjoyed, but it's very expensive. Uh, this size of it is over $200, but I know that they make, I think, something like this size that's, I don't know, it's somewhere in the 90 to one, some 120 maybe. Very expensive, so if you are into luxury beauty, it is nice. My, it has really nice effects on the skin. Um, I would use this as like a midweek flash mask mini exfoliate, and it would keep my skin in check before I could do a more dedicated... Uh, skin pamper exfoliate on a Sunday, which is my favorite day to do intense skincare set me up for the week If you can get a sample of this I think that I think they also sell like the little like something like this size for I don't know ten or twenty dollars I think it's worth trying so if you can get it as like an add-on to an order I think it's really nice to try do you need a whole big size jar of it? I mean, maybe not but yeah, it is quite beautiful I love Max and Me. I love the people behind the brand, and I think they make gorgeous products, albeit quite expensive products. And then Mahalo's The Bean was totally my jam this summer. And this is not the one that came in the Beauty Heroes box. That one is sitting in my refrigerator. I think this one was something Marina sent me maybe in the winter. Totally loved it in June, July, and August. It was just a really great warm weather mask for me. And now that I say that, I think it's interesting to note because, you know, this is something I've talked about before, paying attention to the perspective that someone is formulating skincare from, I think also gives clues to how you might react to it with your sort of skin type throughout the year because none of us have like one skin type that's that way indefinitely like it's always changing as you know and marina formulates from a tropical hawaiian perspective so it would make sense to me that when my skin is more aligned with that seasonal perspective that my skin would sort of like like it more yeah it's a pleasure to use totally like it one of my favorite masks probably for that time of year anyway i highly recommend keeping this in the refrigerator year round just to be safe because it's the only green or like skincare product in general, uh, eco or not, I've had that has ever grown mold. And it only happened once. I scooped it out, put it in the fridge, and that one was fine. This is like my third jar of this probably that I've gone through, and I've never had an issue keeping it in the fridge. So that is what I recommend. Now, before we close, as I have been recording for way too long, I have two other things that I'll just tell you. They're not empty products, but they are things that I am giving away. Uh, or putting in my two giveaway pile. I constantly have to edit my beauty product stash because you know if I give something like a fair test and it's just not not working uh, sometimes I'll retire it to like my under the sink stash and then if I haven't reached for it you know in a fair amount of time after that then I know it's time to sort of and not because either of these products I don't like or haven't liked but I just have other things that I'm prioritizing right now and I would like someone else to use these. This is the Mahalo Original Balm, which I really like. I mean, it's an absolutely beautiful balm. My favorite balm, and kind of the only one that I'll use these days, is the Lena Hansen Global Treasures. That's just my favorite one, and I have like a whole jar of it to use. And I also just don't use face balms in the same way that I used to. Um, my skin just doesn't really need them right now. This is retiring to somewhere else. <laughs> another life. This is Stark Eclipse, which especially now that we're moving into fall and winter, I just don't think I'm going to get a lot of use out of this as it was always on the overly clarifying end of things for me personally, but she can't keep this product in stock. So I think a lot of people really enjoy it. For me, my version of this that really works on my skin is the Osmia Black Clay Facial Soap. If I want a mildly clarifying skin detox and that's just what my skin prefers so I would I think I'm gonna send this to my sister actually as she has um, slightly oilier skin than I do I think 
that's that. I hope you guys enjoyed hearing about all these products and I will try and get to these products in another video soon. This is like body care, dental, <laughs> dental care, lifestyle, that sort of stuff. I have so many videos in the queue. I just have not had time. This fall has been bananas crazy. Are you guys on board with that? Like what is life right now? Like, I don't know. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave me a comment. I would love to talk to you, answer any sort of follow-up questions you might have. And I hope that I'll see you over on Patreon with my holistic medicine cabinet video, which I'm excited to go do right now after I go eat, I am starving. And I always feel like I'm leaving out things that I wanna tell you, but I'll just have to save it for the next video. So I'll see you guys in another video really soon, bye.